In this video, I'm going to show you how we can model addition and subtraction of decimals using decimal squares. So I'm going to start out with modeling addition of decimals. And when I'm doing addition, I like to model each add end in a different color. So that's why you'll see in the problem that I've set up of 4 tenths plus 93 hundredths, that the 4 tenths is in red and the 93 hundredths is in blue. So now I'm ready to shade in each of the add-ends on the decimal squares. And for this example, each of these large squares is equal to one hole. So this would be one hole, and this would also be another hole. So if I were to shade in all of this and all of this, I would have two holes. That also means that these little squares are equal to one one-hundredth. Knowing that this right here is four-tenths, that means I need four complete uh, sets of 10 squares right here. So this is 1 tenth, 1 tenth, 1 tenth, and so on. So I'm going to need to shade in four of those. So here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. So now I have my 4 tenths model. Now I'm ready to model my 93 hundredths. And there's no particular rule about where you have to shade this in on your decimal squares. You just need to shade it in 93 of the 100 squares. But I try to shade everything right next to each other because that'll make it easier to read the answer. So I need 9 tenths shaded in and then 3 one hundredths. So I'm going to go ahead and shade in my tenths. There's 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4, 5, Six, and I'm going to move over to my next hole. Seven, eight, nine complete tenths shaded in, and then I also need three hundredths. So now I can look at the model to find the answer. I have one complete decimal square shaded in, plus on this decimal square I see three tenths and three hundredths. So altogether I have one hole plus three tenths and three hundredths which equals 1 and 33 hundredths. I can look back at my original problem and see how that works out. If I line up place values, which I must do when I'm adding numbers, and then make equivalent decimals, I can see that I have 40 hundredths shaded in red and 93 hundredths shaded in blue. When I did 3 hundredths plus no hundredths, I'm left with the 3 hundredths that I had right here. Then when I did 9 tenths plus 4 tenths, that was all of these parts right here. There's 9 tenths plus 4 tenths. That gave me all together 13 tenths. I left 3 of those tenths on this grid over here. And I carried over 10 of those tenths to this grid right here, which gave me 1 hole and 33 hundredths. So in this next example, I have 1 and 37 hundredths plus 8 hundredths. The first thing I'm going to do is model my first decimal. So when I do 1 and 37 hundredths, it means I'm going to shade this entire decimal square. Now, when you're shading all these, you don't have to be perfect getting everything shaded in. If you want to just put a big X through this whole decimal square, you can. I'm going to shade it in just very quickly and not color within the lines perfectly. So there's one hole. I need three tenths, one tenth, two tenths, and three tenths. And then I also need seven hundredths. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've now modeled my first decimal, and now I'm ready to model my next decimal, eight hundredths. I'm going to pick up where I left off. Eight hundredths is just counting eight individual squares. So there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have now modeled my entire problem and I'm ready to look at the model to determine the answer. So now I'm ready to look at the model to determine my solution. So I have one full square shaded in. On the second square, I have one, two, three, four complete tenths shaded in. No holes, four complete tenths. And then I have one, two, three, four, five extra hundredths shaded in. The 
three blue hundredths that I have at the bottom right here, they're part of this full tenth right here. So they're being counted in as one of these four tenths. So all together, I have one whole plus 45 hundredths is one and 45 hundredths. And I can see that when I work out my actual problem and I line up all the place values, I have eight plus seven hundredths is 15 hundredths. Uh, and then I regrouped and made four tenths. Uh, by the way, this 15 hundredths was this part right here all of this part right here, but we regrouped because we had part of these. These were those eight hundredths plus those seven hundredths that we just added right there. When I regrouped that, I left the five hundredths in the hundredths place, and then I regrouped these three right here along with these seven right here to make 10. So now I'm ready to go ahead and add the tenths. Three tenths plus one tenth is four tenths. So that was these four tenths that I have right here. And now I also have just one whole, so one and 45 hundredths. In this example, I have one and 63 hundredths plus one and 37 hundredths. So I'm going to start out modeling my first decimal, which is one whole and 63 hundredths. I'm going to very quickly shade in one whole. So this entire square is going to be shaded in. Again, you don't have to do this perfectly. It's really more important when you get into the small amounts of the hundreds that we get everything perfect. All right, so there we go, one whole. We want six tenths. So one, two, three, four, five, and six tenths. And now I need to be a little bit more careful, three hundredths. One, two, three. So I've modeled my first add end and now I'm ready to go ahead and shade in my second add end, one and 37 hundredths. And I'm gonna do this a little bit uh, backwards because if I start right where I left off right here, I don't have a complete 10th to shade in. So I'd really have to keep track of exactly how many squares I shade in. And when I shade in one hole, I wanna shade in 100 squares, but I don't really wanna to have to count 100 squares out. However, I have a hole right down here. So I know I'm gonna to need to shade in that hole. So I might as well just go ahead and shade in this entire hole. I'm gonna to need to shade in a hole somewhere anyway. So we'll go ahead and get this entire hole shaded in. Again, not worrying about being perfect because I know it's all gonna be shaded in. And now I need to shade in 37 hundredths. I see three tenths right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade them in one, two, three, and now I need seven hundredths. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be perfect, seven hundredths. So I have completely shaded in my one and 37 hundredths. So I'm, now I'm ready to look at my answer. And this answer should be pretty obvious. I have three complete decimal squares shaded in. So my answer is three holes. 1, 1, and 1 equals 3. If I look at that actual problem and line up place values, I can see I have 7 hundredths and 3 hundredths that I'm going to combine. That's this part right here, 7 hundredths right here, and 3 hundredths. 7 plus 3 is 10. So that's where if we combine those two, we have one full long or one full tenth right here which is why we're gonna carry that over to our next place value. And then in the next place value, I have six tenths plus three tenths plus that one that I just carried over. So that's right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. These six tenths right here, plus these three tenths right here, plus this one that I just regrouped and carried over. So altogether that gives me 10 tenths, which I'm again going to regroup as one whole. That, the reason I'm regrouping that as one whole is because this entire decimal square is shaded in. So altogether, I have three decimal squares shaded in. My answer is three holes. So I'm now going to show you how we can use decimal squares to model subtraction of decimals. The problem that I have set up is two and two tenths minus one and 48 hundredths. And when you are subtracting, you are only going to model the number that you have. 
which in this case is 2 and 2 tenths. So I've quickly shaded in two holes. I also need two tenths. So there's one tenth and another tenth, two tenths. So I've now modeled the number that I have, and now what I want to do is try to take away 1 and 40, 8 hundredths. Now I'm going to use a different color for the part that I'm taking away so that I can clearly see what part has been removed from this number. So I'm going to start at the top and shade in one hole and 48 hundredths. So here is one hole. This entire thing is going to be shaded in. And then I'm also going to want to shade in 48 hundredths, so four longs, four tenths, one, two, three, four tenths, and eight hundredths, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hundredths, completely shaded in. So remembering that this is subtraction, my answer is the part that is left. And remember, I started out with the red. So the red part that is left is the answer to the problem. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 full tenths. I see no holes. 7 full tenths. And then 1, 2 hundredths left over. So my answer is 72 hundredths. If I set up the actual problem and line up place values, I can see what's going on here. Of course, I must make an equivalent decimal right here because I can't take 8 away from nothing. So because I couldn't take 8 tenths away from nothing, I needed to re I, I had to regroup. And this became 1 tenth, and this became 10 hundredths. So when I did 10 hundredths minus 8 hundredths, that was this part right here, this full long 10 hundredths. I subtracted these 8 hundredths from it, and I'm left with these 2 hundredths right there. And then I'm trying to take 1 tenth and subtract 4 tenths, which of course I can't do, so there's some more regrouping. That becomes 11 tenths minus 4 tenths. Where that is on my model, that's one, two, three, four. I already used this one right here in the hundreds place. So I have four right here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's these eleven tenths minus this place, this one right here that I already used. I then subtracted four tenths, one, two, three, four. That's these four tenths right here that are shaded in purple. That leaves me with seven tenths that are not shaded in purple that are left over. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tenths. And then lastly, I have one hole subtracting one hole, and that's this part right here. I had one complete decimal square shaded in. I got rid of the entire thing. One minus one is zero, so my answer is zero and 72 hundredths. In this next example, I have 2 and 9 hundredths minus 64 hundredths. The first thing I'm going to do is model the number that I have, which is 2 and 9 hundredths. So I have quickly modeled two holes, but I need 9 hundredths more. So 9 more squares. So there is 9 hundredths. And I'm ready to now model the number that I'm going to take away, which is 64 hundredths. There's not a particular place that I have to take this away from, but I have to take away 64 squares total. So I'm just going to start at the top and take away 6 tenths first. So there's 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths, 5 tenths, and 6 tenths that I've totally taken away. I have four more hundredths that I need to take away, and I think I'm going to take them away from the bottom just because there's not a complete um, tenth modeled in my, in my bottom uh, decimal square. So I'll take away one, two, three, four hundredths. So now let's look at the answer, and my answer is again going to be the part that is shaded red because that's the part that is left over. So I see for sure one complete hole right here. 
I also see four tenths right here, and then down here, one, two, three, four, five hundredths. So altogether, the red part is one whole, four tenths, and five hundredths. If I look at my original problem, I can see what went on. I started out with nine hundredths down here. I took away four of those, which left me with these five that were still shaded red. Uh, then I was trying to do zero tenths minus six tenths, which of course I can't do, so I have to regroup. Then I have ten tenths minus six tenths. That's what I did right up here. I have ten tenths, a hole right here. I took away these six tenths right here, and I'm left with these four tenths. And then I have one hole that I took nothing away from, and that's why this square right here is all still red. So I have one and 45 hundredths. Let's look at one final example of modeling subtraction of decimals using decimal squares. In this example, I have one and two hundredths minus five tenths. I'm gonna start out modeling the number that I have, which is one and two hundredths. So I need to shade in one full decimal square. plus two more hundredths. So let me get my full decimal square shaded in here. There we go. Plus two more hundredths, one, two. And now I'm ready to take away five tenths, the number that I am trying to get rid of. So here is one tenth, two, three, four, and five tenths that I have now subtracted. So what I have left shaded in red is my answer. So right here I see one, two, three, four, five tenths. And over here I see two hundredths. So all together shaded in red, I have 52 hundredths. So we can look at our problem, line everything up properly, make an equivalent decimal here and see what's going on. In the problem, I have two hundredths minus zero hundredths. That is this part right here. I have two hundredths. I'm not taking any of those away, so they all stay shaded red. Then I am trying to take away my tenths, but I started out with no tenths in my problem right here. Started out with nothing in the tenths, so I'm going to have to do some regrouping so I can take away five tenths. So I exchanged my one whole for ten tenths. Really all that is, is is thinking of this entire red shaded hole as 10 big, 10 longs right here. And now I'm trying to take away five of these longs right here. One, two, three, four, five of those longs. And I'm left with five that are still shaded red. And of course I'm no, now left with no holes. So my answer is zero and 52 hundredths.